God's people, so that's great to know. A um, couple things I want to go over with you. Uh, students, please make sure right now your phones are silent so you don't distract from Gavin's talk at all. And then please put them away. Uh, you're here to, to listen to him for the next 10 minutes. Um, and guys, if you truly listen to him, I think you're going to learn a lot about him and you're going to hear a really important message. So please put phones away. Give 100% of your attention to Gavin when he is up here, and I think you will, you will really enjoy the experience. Um, so Red Talks, basically, the students in, in the speech course here give an 8 to 15 minute talk um, where they get to talk about an area where they feel like they have a lot of uh, background, personality, they love it, a lot of passion for it, and they get to share it uninterrupted for 8 to 15 minutes. Um, you have to be a junior or senior to take the class, so if you're sitting out there and you're a freshman or sophomore or junior, um, you kind of want this opportunity, you can sign up for the speech class. Um, and then uh, it's, it's a really cool experience. I think everyone that has given one would say that. So we appreciate you being here. It's so cool to see so many people out here supporting Gavin. But enough of me. I would like to welcome to the stage Mr. Gavin George. Good afternoon. Um, before I begin, I want to show you a few images. And I would like you to raise your hand and tell me the meaning associated with each one. First, we have this one. Anybody? Crystal? Peace! Yeah, peace. Uh, what about this one? Uh, Morgan? Uh, it, yes, as you see, it is a heart. But what is the meaning associated behind it? Rudge? Love. Yes, it's love. A little tougher one? What about this one? Logan? Danger. Yes, danger. And now, those are examples of universal symbols. And universal symbols are symbols that nearly all people can relate to. Whether that includes people of different culture, time period, gender, race, ethnicity, or even their background. And while there are some symbols that are widely known, I want to talk about the importance of having things of symbolic nature in our own lives. When we invite and welcome symbolism into our lives, we create connections that are beyond artificial and materialistic objects. Symbols can come in all shapes and forms. They're a way to show what you like and even who you are. But why do they mean something? Is the person that gave you it important to you, or does it signify something deeper? I have this necklace, and it means a lot to me, but if you really look at it, it's just a smush penny. It's not even worth one cent, but the personal value you cannot put a price on. And the person that gave me this, they gave it to me to, to find happiness. Another symbol in my life is New York. New York is a place that I've always wanted to live, and I want to do something that inspires people, and obviously, New York is full of people. And I feel like in New York, you're a very tiny piece in a massive puzzle, and everybody's different, but together they make a beautiful city. And to me, New York symbolizes an end goal or even a finish. I even wore New York Mets jersey instead of dressing up. And a little question for the people that know me. Uh, who's one person that I'm constantly talking about no matter what? Serena? D'Anthony. <laughs> no, not D'Anthony. <laughs> Crystal? Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling? I don't know who that is. Rudge? Spider-Man. Yes. Spider-Man. <laughs> I feel like everyone wants to be a superhero, but most superheroes aren't relatable. For example, Captain America, you can see part of his face. But with Spider-Man, you can't see through his mask. And I'm not saying that I'm Spider-Man. But through all his comics and movies, he struggles to balance his work and life. He constantly tries his hardest to make things better, but messes up quite a bit. And we all know the saying, with great power comes great responsibility. But I think he embodies the phrase extremely well. He's a great role model inspiration for all. Spider-Man symbolizes responsibility, or even just doing the right thing for me. Those were examples of symbols in my life. But books do a great job identifying symbols. I want to talk about two books that became movies that I'm sure most of you have seen. And a quick show of hands, how many of you guys are familiar with The Hunger Games? Okay, great. The first symbol in Hunger Games I want to talk about is the pin. In The Hunger Games book, one of Katniss's best friends gives her a pin with a mocking J on it. The movie displays the pin as a symbol of hope for Katniss to make it through the game the book also illustrates the pen as a symbol of hope, but for rebellion against the capital. Two different meanings, but both symbols. Another symbol is Katniss herself. 
In the movies, she literally becomes a symbolic by being put on video as an icon. And the last symbol I want to talk about from Hunger Games are the districts. The districts are a dystopian United States with the capital that rules over them. The districts eventually come together to overthrow the capital, and the districts symbolize revolution against oppression. The next book I want to talk about is Lord of the Rings. How many of you guys are familiar with Lord of the Rings? Okay, a lot less. That's good. Lord of the Rings series is a little bit older, but it still shows lots of symbolism. The first symbol is the ring. The ring is the center of the trilogy, and it has many meanings as Frodo's journey proceeds. The ring symbolizes greed. For example, Gollum lost his mind because he wanted the ring. Throughout, we see many people try and take the ring, and they, every single one of them gets corrupted by its influence. And that ring has lots of power, and a person who carries that power is Frodo. Frodo symbolizes sacrifice, because he used all his strength, he used all his power just to destroy the ring. He sacrificed many things, at one point, a lifelong friendship. But a very important place in the series, too, is Middle-earth. Middle-earth is where everything takes place, also known as the land of man. And it symbolizes their home, or peace. Somebody, Saruman, tries to take it over, but they fight for peace. And I'm sure most of you guys were familiar with all the symbols that I just talked about. But there was a common pattern. For each topic, I gave an object, a person, and a place. And I gave you guys multiple examples from popular movies and examples from my life. But why? Because symbolism is important. In stories, it gives the readers an understanding of how important something is to the main character. A perfect example is in Mr. Lamb's class. We read Catcher in the Rye. In the Catcher in the Rye, Holden Caulfield buys a red hunting hat. And he'd put it on whenever he was feeling alone because it was comforting for him. And when he was down, he would put the hunting hat on because it was comforting for him. And that hat is symbolizes protection. But to everybody, it's just the hat. And to everybody, it's just the necklace. But symbolism extends into more. We use symbolism every day. We use symbolism for communication. Hieroglyphics, a written language built on just symbols. Well, any foreign language, as a matter of fact. But the thing is, a foreign language has no meaning because you haven't given it any, or you haven't learned it, and that's it. It has no meaning because you haven't given it one. In the Disney Plus show, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Sam Wilson says, symbols are nothing without the women or men that give them meaning. And throughout the show, they're constantly fighting to find that meaning. And maybe in life, you need to fight to find your symbolism or your meaning. And symbolism is everywhere, and sometimes it's hidden or concealed. It's like an invisible expression. They're there, just hidden. But those symbols tell stories, and those stories are beautiful. And I would like to challenge each of you to think of an object, person, and a place that have meaning in your own life. And it can mean anything that could bring back a good memory, or someone or somewhere that just makes you happy. Because symbols shape who you are, and they help shape who you become. And to close off, Canadian author Manly Hall said, to live in the world without becoming aware of the meaning of the world is like wandering about in a great library without touching the books. I encourage you to become more aware and uncover symbolism to help find meaning in your own life. Thank you. Somebody gave it to me when I was not really in a good spot, and 
they just helped me try and find the spot that I needed to be. And so I don't know, it's just important to me. Good timing, I guess. D'Anthony? Uh, can you speak up a bit? Did you find your meaning? Did I find my meaning? Um, honestly, I think that I found a good meaning, but I think everybody can improve no matter what. And I feel like as my life goes on, I'm very young, that I'll find more meanings and more ways to help people. Any other questions? Yeah, why'd you pick? I mean, they get to pick any idea that they want to develop, basically. Why, why simple? Well, um, you know, a lot of people ask me why I do a lot of things, why I'm constantly watching Spider-Man, why I'm, I don't know, just doing a lot of things, and I just feel like with this, I can really show why, like I do the things I do, and why they're important to me, and show a few examples on other things that aren't related to me, and show why they're important in general. Good. Any last questions? Yeah, I yes, sorry, let's see. How long have I been in love with Spider-Man? Um, <laughs> 2010.